As we're talking about the Mets, you know where we're going. You know where we're going. Panic with the flames of doom. All right, first, we're, oh, we're going to hear, all right, let's hear from Pete Alonso and try to erase the memories none of, those of, of the flames. Let's listen. There's certain times in the process where you know you're doing the right thing. You know you're on the right path, but you're just not getting the tangible results. So Mets fans, believe in us. And don't just believe, no, because the, there's tough times, not just in baseball, but in life in general. Know that this is, this is just going to be, this is just a speed bump and a challenge. And also smile. You get to watch baseball, even though we're, I mean, it's a game. You can, I know it's a, I know we have a, the most passionate fan base in baseball. I know that. And I understand that it's frustrating. It's frustrating for us, but uh, just understand that we're, we're here together. We're all in this together. And they're, we got this. We got this. Just smile and just know that, that we got this. I have to say, I hadn't seen that comment. I've seen, I've seen it um, talked about, um, s you know, squashed, you know, made fun of, mocked, and this and that. Like, what are you saying? That was, that was excellent. Like, it's like saying, I remember the, the New York football giants years ago. They, they came back and they made it to the Super Bowl. They got a wild card. And early in the season, they had a lousy record. And I remember, I think it was Tom Coughlin said, you know what, we're having really good practices. And he was mocked, like, oh, you're having good practices. That's terrific. <laughs> Practice. Practice is going great. It's like, no, but that's where it starts. I don't know. There's just something to, yeah, you just have to stick to your process, even when you're reeling. And it is puzzling that the, it's their offense that is really uh, an issue here, Ken. 29th in runs per game, yeah. which is a damning statement. I don't care how many injuries they've had. They should not be 29th. Now, Pete, in my view, was being maybe overly optimistic there, <laughs> and I'm sure Mets Twitter was not thrilled to hear them being told to have fun when it's not so fun right now. But Yankees, Braves, Phillies, three teams that have been in this situation this year, like the Mets, where it looked like they can't get out of their own way, it looked like there is no chance they were going to make the postseason, and they did come out of it. It is, in Alonzo's defense, a long season. There is the capability or the possibility that DeGrom comes back, Lindor comes back, and these guys get on a roll. But we've also seen this now for four plus months, and it's not too pretty. Uh, and on top of this now, Javi Baez comes in. And look, Javi Baez will make this great slide and come in. Javi Baez will throw a guy out at the plate on a relay. He's doing baseball-y things. Then he'll go 0 for 5 with five strikeouts, and it just kind of, it's like the, the icing on a bad cake, John, you know, with the offense the way it's struggling. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, again, I, I think you go back to that flawed division. Uh, I think the Mets, even though they were going, you know, still were a flawed club. Now with the injuries compounding it, they, they remind me a little bit of a club that was sort of thrown together a little bit at the last minute. I mean, okay, they go get the big splash of Lindor, you know, and, and we're, we think we're going to be a really good club, and it isn't. And I, I think that you're right. It, I wouldn't say doom. I would say panic if we're going into that Ooh, one. We're going to panic. Okay. Um, right. You know, I, I would be, I, I'd, I'd be very concerned, uh, you know, about this ball club. But, you know, again, when you look at, uh, at this division, anything is possible. Mets, you still have time to turn it around. But, you know, a lot of things have to happen. And again, I go back to trade deadline. And, you know, again, that's the one chance where you have a chance to step up. They made a deal with the Cubs, and they gave up a first-round draft pick and Pete Crow Armstrong. They went Javi Baez. And I know they, uh, Chris Bryant was sitting there at the same time. Mm -hmm. You say, okay, Javi Baez fits because of Lindor, but if, if, if it's offense we want, you know, would they have been better served there? Would they have been better served going out after a starting pitcher? Mm. Pitching usually ends up playing. And at the end of it, if Baez is hurt, maybe it's, it's a moot point anyway. But that's, a that's a good specific point. You get, you weigh in on that, because that's like, right, they gave real to get. Did they go in the right direction? Well, I'm at panic, too, first of all. And I'm at panic because this series this weekend, the one against the Phillies, should have been one where you saw urgency and a better performance, team snapping out of it. We didn't see that. Now, Phillies pitching had a lot to do with it. Okay, now, as for the Baez move, I tend to agree with John. Baez was the more natural position fit, perhaps, even though Brian plays all over the place. He doesn't play shortstop, and right now they need a shortstop. But to give up P. Crow Armstrong, the 19th pick in the 2020 draft, maybe Bryant would have been the preferable choice, or maybe you get into the Jose Barrios mix because that's the level of prospect. Actually, two of them went to Toronto for, or to Minnesota for Barrios. So I can see the second guessing there, and 
Baez, we all love watching him. He's electric. He's so much fun to watch. He can drive you nuts, too. I, I, so I, that's the issue. I, I wanted to get to one thing that on a theme, especially when I have John Hart here and we're sitting together on a weekend doing an MLB tonight. We're just talking baseball and going on. We've talked a lot this year about the yeah, it, it's something that is it's the it's the alchemy. It's not clubhouse chemistry, but it's something that right. The scribe, you just don't want to say the word scribes for many years have attributed <laughs> team success that we can't quite explain to the clubhouse chemistry. Maybe it's just chemistry or it's alchemy. It's this or it's magic or it's when all your parts fit together and it makes sense. And this year, why are the Giants better than they should be? How come the Rays still lead the AL East? How come the Mariners at one point were nine games over 500 when they're out, getting outscored by 50 runs? And I'll bring it to the Mets. When we, I was saying, you're watching the Mets. Everybody's hurt. Everybody's hurt. How are they winning? Guillaume, VR, Pilar, tough players who will fight you for nine innings. Those guys, John, were in first place. It's all I'm saying. Now, Guillaume had a 400 on base. He wasn't some phantom. But isn't it something that the no-name, gutty, gritty guys that you've often talked about, I'm swinging your direction now, in the pitch-by-pitch -pitch fight, those Mets were in first place. And it wasn't just, you know, swinging over their heads. They'd fight you every single inning. And that's not happening now with the Mets. It isn't. And, you know, again, you look at their stars because you, you do. You bring up a great point. And I think if you can make good margin calls on getting a Pilar, um, getting a margin call on some of these players and they perform, you're so far ahead of the game because you still do count on your stars. You look at the year Conforto's having, you're saying that that shouldn't. You look right. at Lindor and you're going, man, I, you know, how are we withstanding this? They were withstanding it because they had some of those margin pieces were playing very well. And, and, and those margin, the margin pieces I want to point out, too. It's like we, we've identified that it's also it's a combination of plate discipline, contact, playing multiple defensive positions and base running. So it's not just he's a good guy in the clubhouse. It's like, no, there are skills that are translating here. Brian, the only thing I would say to that is. With some of those guys, you can ride them for only so long. Yeah. And Pilar is a good player. Over your, these guys are all good players. But are over they, six months, that's not going to win? Are they everyday 600 plate appearance guys at this stage of their careers? Probably not. So they did get a lot out of those guys. And mm -hmm. that perception of tougher at bats, maybe that was real during yeah. that time. At the same time, as John said, Conforto. Yeah. He's supposed to be one of the big free agents this year. This was supposed to be his platform monster year. Hasn't happened. Even Alonzo, who has been the most consistent yeah. guy, is having a horrible August. It just hasn't clicked for whatever reason. I just say, like, this show we try to operate as a think tank. I would say, yeah, you're probably right. That's the conventional wisdom. You're not going to win over six months with those guys. I think we should occasionally ask, are you sure? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Are you sure? Have you watched the Rays? I don't know. How are they? Like, they're still in first place. So that's all. But we'll, we'll end on that. Alchemy. We're thinking. Chemistry. Alchemy. Yeah, okay. Hard. Determination. Determination. Yes. Yes. Now you're talking.